Welcome to Apaga University. I'm Inga. And I'm Julie. We are two entrepreneurs who have built an in-home care business from the ground up, guided every step of the way by God's care and fueled by agape love. 16 years later and over 100 podcast episodes already under our belts, we invite you to continue on this journey with us as we share stories that resonate, insights that inspire, and practical guidance that empowers you to face any obstacle along this path. Whether you're a professional caregiver, a family member, or are simply curious about what your steps will be when you need them, you have come to the right place. Oh, hey, and while you're here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And after that, make sure you send this to a friend. Yes, do it. All right, we'll quit fooling around and get to it. Let's go. Class is in session. Hello, Sunshines, and hello, Julie. Well, good morning. How are you? I'm good. Good. So the topic today is something you're an expert on, I think. (laughs) Well, thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Oh, boy. Oh, boy. It's going to be one of those days. One of those. What's new? (laughs) Um, Well... This is ironic that the topic today is about constipation. (laughs) And thus, when you have constipation, you may have a shitty attitude. (laughs) And I've had one of those this week, not because of constipation, I'll tell you, (laughs) but because you're making me learn a new computer software thingy. I I know, you're you're (sighs) kind of mad about it. (laughs) So all (laughs) week long, all I'm getting is... Julie, your attitude affects your altitude (laughs) and it affects how the whole program and project will go. Please. Please. (laughs) So the other morning I text you, it was like early and I'm just like, I'm waking up happy. I'm waking up excited about this new computer program. But what I didn't tell you, dot, dot, dot. So I hadn't gotten out of bed yet. (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Oh, I love it. No, it's going to be great. I'm so excited. Yes. And oh. yeah, the, I'm crossing my eyes on the training and I had to actually email the company and be like, hey, on these quizzes, like <laughs> I clearly am not like reading and interpreting your questions the way that they are written and intended because oh. I am flunking. So if there's like a back end thing where you can see how bad I'm doing, um, I promise I'm not an idiot. Yeah, just don't look. I, I really will be proficient in this and I, 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 I've got a good handle on it, but for some reason, I am not doing well with your quiz. <laughs> <laughs> and you you got me because you're like oh is your is your ego a little bruised there I was like yes yes it is I am used to being a very good student and I don't feel like I'm being a very good student right now oh yeah yeah, yeah. I didn't have that problem at all <laughs> didn't bother me in the least oh god I they did put in there every time you must pass with an 80 percent or more yeah, I know. I didn't. That's a little strange. They also give you the opportunity to uh, correct your error. So that helps so me a I lot. So I don't know if the 80% is after you fix. <laughs> I don't know if it won't let you go to the next, um, like the next module or the next course or something. I, I really don't know because, yeah. so, you know, I just kept trying until I got it right. <laughs> <laughs> let me see. I've done this and this and this. So it's not it, this it's, one. It's not this one. It's yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, no, it's, no attitudes is great. And actually, um, I've got something that I'm going to be reading for my good news story. It's not really a story, but uh-huh. something that I'm going to be reading that I'm super excited about. And then in a future podcast, I have another thing about attitude that I know. Roll you your see eyes. What I deal with every day. All of this uh, motivation and positivity and all this and- happy crap. <laughs> I know it's exhausting. <laughs> it's just a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. All right. Well, it's the verse, right? We the do verse. the verse next. The okay. Verse. <laughs> Let's do that then. This is Romans 12, verse 2. Don't change yourselves to be like the people of this world, but let God change you inside with a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to understand and accept what God wants for you. You will be able to know what is good and pleasing to him and what is perfect. It was kind of the whole thing um, with the, the, the new computer program. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, what is it? Again, because I, I can't stop talking about this change your paradigm, change your life. Yeah. People don't resist. Um, people don't resist change. They resist being changed. Right. So <sighs> once you there made a decision that you were, it, that it wasn't me forcing you to do it, <laughs> that it was your idea, not mine, but your attitude sure changed. Also, I didn't want to 
bust your little happy bubble. I know. You're by like, being I gotta a keep. poop. So I, I had know. to change my attitude. <laughs> I'm so excited about it. I think it's going to be amazing. <sighs> How can somebody not be happy and uplifted when they hear that? I know. It's, it's like... Still I am just on seeing the efficiency, but I also, every time I'm working through a new module in there, I'm, I see you with a, like a paper calendar, writing out your schedule. Cause that's, you're just old school. Yes. So I, am. I like to touch things. Right. It's important. Well, and I did give you like three weeks to get used to the, or not three weeks, three months to get used to the idea of the new program. Yeah. So. But do you know how fast three <laughs> months goes if you're ignoring something? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> True story. <laughs> All right. Well, what did you bring? What are we talking about oh, for good news? Well, for good news, this guy, um, actually, his bad attitude probably got a lot better because they found a painting in an it Italian villa basement that turned out to be an original Picasso. What? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a big find. This, this guy had given his wife a picture. She didn't really like it, so she put it in a really cheap um, frame and just kind of stuck it up. And then when he... He didn't notice anymore. She put it in the basement, and when they were cleaning up, they found it. Oh my gosh! And right now they're saying that it's probably at least two point five million. And somebody else is like, uh, "No, it's probably two or three or four times more than that." So their attitude is great right now. No kidding. They have some pending um, coinage coming their way. <laughs> yeah, and it's all about it's all uh, perspective, right? It really is. It's, it's that one where it's like got two faces. If you're yeah, it that. would be kind of creepy to have, you know, to have that looking at you all the time. Well, yeah. Actually. But it's, a, it's all about, I mean, what something is worth is what someone's willing to pay for it. Right. right? I mean, that's the bottom line. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I am going to read you a poem. It is called One and Only You by James T. Moore. <laughs> it's out of this wonderful series that I'm reading over and over and listening to on Audible. It's it's basically included in that Change Your Paradigm book. Mm -hmm. But anyway, so One and Only You by James T. Moore. Every single blade of grass and every flake of snow is just a wee bit different. There's no two alike, you know. From something small like grains of sand to each gigantic star, all were made with this in mind to be just what they are. How foolish then to imitate, how useless to pretend, since each of us comes from a mind whose ideas never end. There only be just one of me to show what I can do, and you should likewise feel very proud. There's only one of you. That is where it all starts, with you, a wonderful, unlimited human being. Boom. Boom. Is that beautiful? That is beautiful. <sighs> I love it. Yeah, well, right. I'm really, got to be honest, I'm glad there's only one of you because like, the world couldn't <laughs> handle two. <laughs> the whole time. That's what you're thinking. <laughs> I just couldn't be more than one of you. We can't take it. <laughs> Oh, Lordy. All right. Well, let's talk about poop. Let's talk about poop. You talk, I'll listen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just, I, I truly, one of my alter egos is a 12 year old boy. <laughs> I just can't help it. I think it's funny, but it's not funny because poop really, truly people set their clocks. Lives clocks their lives to having a good poo every day and hopefully it is every day some people not so much anytime I'm out driving and someone's acting like a real jerk in the way that they're driving <laughs> I'm like oh, that person must have to poop yeah that can be the yeah. only explanation for why they would be so impatient and such a jerk <laughs> and speaking of driving I literally heard this one time if you have to go poo and you're driving, you should put your butt warmer on in your car because evidently that relaxes you and you quit thinking you have to poop. Oh, I thought it just made you feel like you peed your pants. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had it happen? Where... No, not peed your pants. <laughs> have you ever had it happen where um, like you will either, you will inadvertently bump the seat warmer button for somebody that's yes. riding with you and or someone does it to you yes and all you're like sitting there and all of a sudden you're just like did I just pee my pants what is happening <laughs> why is my butt warm <laughs> yeah <laughs> that is uh, a interesting terrible feeling. okay well yeah yeah but you know tips from Julie <laughs> we had a client and she had a terrible time getting to poo 
every day. Mm. And her husband, literally, it made her break. It was a make or break deal for him on his attitude if she could poop exactly at 10 o'clock every morning. I mean, he had her on every pill and tea and everything. But the sad thing was he was so focused on her taking a crap <laughs> that basically... She was so stressed out. I think her little sphincter wasn't working. <laughs> I just, she, he was just getting so mad at her when she couldn't poop at 10. Oh, no. Yeah. That's, yeah. That's the worst. So I'm just like, this is a big deal. I mean, I know that this is a goofy talk, but topic <laughs> to talk about, but a lot of people have problems with yeah. said topic. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to talk about it. Okay. So the unmentionable, even though we've mentioned it multiple <laughs> times already, um, these are uh, basically common questions and stuff about our bodies. Um, and basically the key takeaways from everything you're going to learn from us today is that constipation is a common condition that can affect people of all ages, but that doesn't always make it an easy subject to talk about. Enter Julie. <laughs> 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 the foods we eat, especially how much fiber is in them, can impact how we poop. Drinking water and getting exercise are also important. And we're all different. And there are some issues with your pooping schedule that mean you should see the doctor. Okay, listen up. Yeah. Did you know that constipation affects about a third of people at any given time? That's where everybody's cranky. All right. So who in the office is constipated? <laughs> One and a half of us probably is. Yeah, not I. <laughs> not I. I'm, I'm is it you, Alyssa? Morning. No, no, not she's Alyssa. good too. Okay, it must be Molly. <laughs> must be. <laughs> Many things affect how well your gut is working, but the food you eat makes a big difference. So some foods are much, much better than others for present preventing and relieving constipation. Well, you know, the, the, the universal joke is just go to Taco Bell. Oh, see, I, was, <laughs> I always heard McDonald's, but same, same idea. <laughs> yeah. Can't poop? Get yourself some McDonald's. <laughs> Can't poop? Go to Taco Bell. Yeah. <laughs> so what causes it? Oh, man. Constipation is when you don't poop at least a few times a week. Uh, it might be painful or difficult to go to the bathroom. The stool may be hard or lumpy, and you can feel like you haven't emptied your bowels completely. Mm. Hmm. In adults, conditions like hypothyroidism, irritable bowel syndrome, and Parkinson's disease can cause constipation. Hormone changes in pregnancies may also play a role. Even depression and stress can affect bowel movements. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, constipation is also a side effect of different medications. And we deal with that a lot. A lot, a lot. Yeah, because, you know, nothing really hurts more than having a tummy ache because you can't poop. Mm. Um and uh, so when somebody's like, well, we were trying this new medication on mom, I'm like, is she also drinking a lot of water? Right. Because then if mother gets constipated, then we've got a whole nother set of stuff to worry sure. about. And don't we see a lot where like a doctor, if they're prescribing a certain, maybe it's an antibiotic or something that is known to cause constipation, mm -hmm. they will also... A stool recommend softener. a stool softener well, things like that you hope so but it's it's more the uh the narcotics yeah and oh that's true so um hopefully you're thinking ahead right yeah because there's a lot of over the counter stuff mm -hmm. but even without these medical conditions or medications many people do not have regular bowel movements mm. i remember my little brother <laughs> He had a hell of a time when he was a kid. And whenever he did finally poop, he would be so happy. He'd go, Mom, Mom, you got to come see this. <laughs> One time she literally called me, goes, oh, my God, a poor little guy. I don't even know how he could have had that much in him. Oh. But, he, you know, some people are just built that way. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have somebody else in my family, we won't say names because <laughs> this topic has been embarrassing enough, is that she also got to a point where she couldn't poop regularly. So she did a lot of enemas. Ooh. And with that, you've got to be careful because there are some things that you do to your body that maybe your body then will become dependent Ooh. on not being able to do something until you do the enema right. or anything. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So that sounds terrible. Yeah. That does not sound like a good time at all. Not at all. Not at all. No. Okay, so what is a healthy number of bowel movements? So everybody's body is different, and that includes how often we need to move our bowels, but a healthy number of bowel movements for adults and children is anywhere from three times a day to three times Holy, a week. Holy, three times a day? I'm very happy with once. Thank you very much. <laughs> so are we, Julie. <laughs> we couldn't handle three times a day. <laughs> and, and so you know the stool should be soft, formed, and easy to pass. Okay. <laughs> 
We don't know. We don't know how it's going for you in that. We don't need to know how it's going for you in that. Things department. are fine. Thank you very okay. much for asking. <laughs> Oh, so foods, <laughs> what foods can help with constipation? Um, so basically for many of us, changes in habits can help treat constipation or even pre prevent it. Eating foods that are high in fiber, drinking plenty of fluids and getting regular exercise can all help. When making our daily choices, it helps to know what kinds of foods keep the digestive system active and healthy. So basically fiber, that's a big one. You hear about it all the time. Right. There are actually two different types of fiber, um, and both of them help you poop. Soluble fiber makes stool softer and easier to pass. Insoluble fiber adds bulk to the stool and moves it efficiently through the intestines. So a diet high in fiber has other health benefits. It can help with weight management, controlling blood glucose, lowering cholesterol, and can also help reduce the risk of cancer. Mm. Um, so basically, foods that are high in fiber. Um, fiber comes from plants, so... For high fiber foods, think foods think about fruits and vegetables as well as whole grains, nuts and seeds and beans. Um, fruits like pears, berries, apples, prunes, cherries, kiwis, those are all really good ha! sources of fiber. Cherries. Whenever the <laughs> flathead cherries come out, you always eat like one whole sack by yourself. Because <laughs> they come out once a year and then you're in big, big trouble. <laughs> big, are you Big trouble. I, not that it's happened to me ever. Right. No, I. I mean, but just think. warning watch the cherries. <laughs> Vegetables. Oh, these are going to be some great ones. You're going to love them. Well, Brussels sprouts, <laughs> broccoli, Ugh. artichokes, Ew. cauliflower, Ugh. carrots, <laughs> spinach. No. Yeah. It's a good thing I don't <laughs> need vegetables for my pooping situation. Legumes. Okay, so beans, peas, and lentils. Mm -hmm. You're out on all those? No, no. I love a good chili. Okay. <laughs> good grief. Nuts and seeds. Um, just a handful of almonds, pistachios, or pumpkin seeds, or even like a spoonful of chai seeds or flax seeds can give you a healthy serving of fiber. I didn't know that. Yeah. Ah. You, you learn something new. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, good. And oh. then whole grains. Um, so basically, brown rice, quinoa, oats, popcorn. Those are things that... Popcorn? Mm -hmm. What? See, yeah. look how smartical we're getting. I know. All that popcorn that I've been eating? Yeah. That Not is... really, but I do love popcorn. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So... Basically, a couple additional tips for increasing your fiber intake. Um, first, eat a variety of the foods mm -hmm. to get the benefits of soluble and insoluble fiber mm -hmm. for your digestive system. And mm -hmm. then go slow and mm -hmm. drink plenty of fluids. So mm -hmm. re revving up your fiber intake too quickly can actually cause other problems like bloating and gas, especially if your body's not used to it. So. <laughs> Unless you're used to bloating and gas and it's just <laughs> a thing that happens. Yeah. Not that I know. I, I know. I don't think you relate to any of these things. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. So fluids, why are fluids important? Well, I'll tell you what. So to in my personal life, um, I know I have to drink water. Mm -hmm. And water sometimes is like a friggin' second job during the day. <laughs> it's so hard until you got the fancy ice maker here. I know. Yeah, that With helps the because ice. the ice is really good. Yes. Um, but anyway, um, I will have consequences if I don't drink enough water. And mm -hmm. I don't find out till about three o'clock in the morning that I have a stitchiation till it's too late. <laughs> and then you can't go guzzle water because it's too late because it has to filter through your body to get to wherever your problem situation is. <laughs> yeah, water is a big deal. Yeah. It's weird though. Like sometimes when I drink water, I it actually makes me feel tired. Oh. <laughs> I, it's a straight, because it shouldn't. It should, you should feel energized. Energized, and, yeah, I yeah. Know, I so, think my body's just so used to those you know, Copper Mountain moonshine. Right. right. It's like, what is this water? We we reject what is this. this normal and yeah, <laughs> unflavored thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and then also another time that you got to be super careful is like when you're traveling, mm -hmm. because water is not as accessible. Right. And like when I went on my last little couple day hiatus, um, you're always worried. Will I know where there's a bathroom? Mm -hmm. When's the next time I'm going to see a toilet? Right. And when you get old like me and a bladder like mine, <laughs> you just have to kind of know yeah. these really critical situations Plant. so you, you got to know your body drink as much beforehand yeah. so you know that you're yeah. not gonna get in a situation in a bad situation mm -hmm. so yep. that's not good so anyway what were we talking about fluids oh fluids they're really important <laughs> yes because <laughs> basically when it when you're even just a little bit dehydrated mm -hmm. your poop gets hard oh right? yeah <laughs> and, oh yeah and then your intestines can't do their job as well yeah well and then when you have 
the hard ones, it's, it brings it out other problems that we didn't even, I wasn't even going to go there, but you know, people end up with hemorrhoids and very big problems. Mm -hmm. If you don't hydrate, (sighs) you're welcome for that PSA. (laughs) Public service I just can't even. Sometimes I just can't even believe the things that we talk about. <laughs> hey, somebody somewhere needed to hear about this today. I guess so. <laughs> well, when I um, did um, some time working at the hospital, you wouldn't believe, and we've got clients, how many, especially some of our little ladies, will end up in the ER because they are so stoved up because they haven't pooped for days. Yeah. And then they get the worst tummy ache. Funniest story, not funny, funniest. When I was working at the ER there, they had sections. You take this section, you take these many rooms, you take these. Well, Steve had this one group Mm -hmm. and they put the little lady in there that couldn't poop Mm. into Steve's. What um, did Steve do to deserve that? Well, that's what he was wondering. (laughs) But anyway, they're like, the only way we're going to unplug this little lady is to do it digitally. And so Steve was literally trying to sell his soul to all of the other nurses who will do this. I'll take this, this, and this for you if you'll just go do that one thing. So he was really bummed out because nobody wanted to go unplug her. And so (laughs) I, of course, thought it was hilarious. And as I'm sitting there, I started popping off. Jeez, Steve, you seem to be getting a shitty attitude. (laughs) Oh, my God, it smells like shit in here. (laughs) Just nonstop with the poop jokes. (laughs) I thought I was hilarious. He was not entertained at all. I was waiting for somehow you to have to clean up after it or something (laughs) as your uh, gosh, that what a terrible thing though for her and for him. Oh yeah. I mean, honestly, that's the worst. How embarrassing. (sighs) Yeah. I wouldn't, I don't know. (sighs) That's why you have to not let it happen, but it happens a lot to people. And, and sometimes you won't know it until it's several days. You're like, and sometimes when somebody's got a tummy ache, it's like, well, one of the first things I ask people nowadays is, well, when's the last time you pooped? <laughs> and they're like, it's oh. been a couple of days. Maybe that is it. And I'll go drink some water and eat some prunes, man. Yep. And then stay away from me. Go see Inga. <laughs> <laughs> She'll find a way to make it positive. <laughs> How annoying. Oh, no. I was just hoping they'd pack <laughs> gas in your oh, room. Oh, <laughs> you do enough of that for hey, me. Hey, hey, hey. You chased me into the kitchen. And it's not alleged. It happened. <laughs> I believe the you, fifth. you tricked me into thinking you had like something super important to tell me. You're like, come here, come here. Like, wait, I, I need to share something with you. Inga, we don't bear all on this podcast. <laughs> oh, we don't? <laughs> Good grief. Oh, Lord. I'm traumatized. She is telling fibs, people. Just telling fibs. <sighs> Embellishing, adding a little bit of salt to said story. <laughs> I don't know, Julie. Who do you think they're going to believe? <laughs> you are a 12-year-old boy at heart. This is true. Okay. Um, oh, they're saying um, if, if you don't like plain water, put some of that Mio or some oh, yeah. kind of flavored lemon in into it. A lot Ooh. of people do lemon and, you know, those filter thingies that they have. They put mm. cucumbers and lemons. Cucumber water is so good. Gross. I had it the other day, and I was like, I, it was, man, it just hit. It was really good. Hmm. I liked it a lot. Weird. Yeah. So pro- probiotics, mm-hmm. do they help with regular bowel movements? Um, they contain live bacteria. These bacteria are part of the normal makeup of a healthy body. Uh, probiotics are food that help feed healthy bacteria in the gut as they pass through. Mm. So the most common group of bacteria in probiotic foods and supplements are lactobacillus and bifidobacterium. Pretty close. Pretty Both close, of them close enough. <laughs> seem to help prevent and relieve constipation. Mm. But studies have shown that products with more than one specimen of bacteria work best. Foods like yogurt and kefir or, or fermented vegetables. Oh, like sauerkraut and kimchi. Dude, I love sauerkraut. And I did not know that I loved sauerkraut. I was... I would have bet my life that I didn't like sauerkraut <laughs> up until I actually tried it. <laughs> Because I for 15 years, I was like, oh, I hate that stuff. I'm not, no sauerkraut for me. And then I tried it and I was so mad that I had missed 15 years <laughs> of good sauerkraut. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, it's the bomb. Yeah. Uh, that's still not going to work with broccoli with me. Yeah. No way. Anyway, those <laughs> are great sources of probiotics that you can add to your diet. Um, other garlic, seaweed, and chicory. 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 So chicory close. Do. So close. <laughs> 
as well as many other high fiber foods. These foods help with constipation because of their fiber and the good bacteria that grows because of it. Mm. Well, let's now talk about the five best drinks for constipation. Yes, we already talked pretty in depth about water and how important it is and Mm -hmm. how for us, how hard it is to actually get it done. Eight glasses. Yeah, that's crazy. Yep. That's a lot of water, but it's, it, it's a thing. What do they say? You're supposed to drink half of your body weight, body weight in ounces of water. Yeah. So I better get out a couple (laughs) gallons. Oh, geez. Jeez Louise. Good thing the old Culligan's on his way. Yeah, no kidding. Um, Coffee. How yeah. many times do you hear people say they have to have their morning coffee? Before they, yeah. Yep. Yeah, there's a, two things I got to do before I leave. I got to <laughs> drink my coffee and then that starts yep. the process. Warm drinks. So basically other warm beverages other than coffee can help relieve constipation. Like green tea, black tea, water with lemon, Whatever you want to drink warm, I guess. Mm. Fruit juice. You mentioned prunes. Don't they make a prune juice of oh, some yeah. sort? Oh, yeah. I'm trying to think of what other juices. Mm. Apricot juice might be good. Mm. Apple, pear, prune. Apple juice? That's what it says. I never thought about it. Mm. Yeah. Apple juice always gives me a tummy ache. Ah. Not in the right way. Mm-mm. Yeah. And then probiotic drinks. So um, I think they make, I think I'm seeing these a lot of, trendy new types of drinks that have probiotics in them like they almost come in like a pop can and oh yeah they make them all kinds of fun flavors um kumbacha is a fermented drink Mm. that's disgusting it's got chunks in it oof my kids love it yeah i'm not i haven't i i there's nothing worse to me than taking a nice swig of something and then filling something like into your mouth and down the hole That Wait, to me is probably a fly. What is it? Kumbacha. You're asking me to say a word. Is that how you say it? It is. I thought it was kim- kombucha. Kim- kombucha. Oh, kombucha, kombucha. Well, I would. I, I don't even know how I thought it was pronounced. Kombucha. But, well, it is a U. Well, I'm not even. Uh, yeah. Huh. Kombucha. Kombucha. Wait, is that right? Kombucha. Okay. Well, anyway. <sighs> Let's just ask Fair. Alyssa. She's, she's the grammar young. police around here. She's young she, and she knows she busts things. me every time. I used a, a kid word yesterday in the right context and she about fell out of her chair. <laughs> I don't even and try. And then I was like, oh God, did I say something about, did I, is there a different meaning for than what I thought I was saying? And <laughs> you're not going to trick me into looking on Urban Dictionary again. <laughs> you got me once there, kids. Oh, there's some dumb stuff out <laughs> there that just ticks me off because I use them all the time and they're evidently naughty. Oh, yeah. And it was perfectly innocent on my part. Always innocent on your part. Yes. Yes. Okay, so drinks. There are drinks that can actually make constipation worse. Did Uh you know? I did not. Milk. So lactose is a type of sugar found in milk, and it can cause constipation. People with lactose intolerance are more likely to develop constipation from drinking milk. So if you're having that problem, take a break from milk and other lactose products. Oh, because don't you hear like cheese, like people that yeah. eat a lot of cheese can have a problem? Oh, yeah. No, the other day we were just at a, a place where they had this beautiful charcuterie. Did I say charcuterie right? Charcuterie. Ding. Charcuterie. Charcuterie board. <laughs> anyway, those are lovely little meat and cheeses. <laughs> and I was just hogging down the old cheese and it was, it was delicious. And... Then I thought, oh, Lord, I should be a little careful because cheese helps you bind you up. Other thing, possibly licorice. Oh, really? Yeah. Is a binder? Yeah. How do you know? Experience? May have ate a lot of <laughs> licorice in my life. <laughs> so then you just go to McDonald's, Taco Bell, or have a bag of flathead cherries, and all your problems are over. <laughs> and everybody else has begun. <laughs> <laughs> True story. Um Oh my gosh, charcuterie, <laughs> car shootery. Shuh. I've heard it so many different ways and Shuh. it's so cute. I'll never forget her saying charcuterie. Right? Char. Char. Oh, is it with an R? Charcuterie. 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 Who knows? I'm confused now. <laughs> it's not car shootery. I know that for <laughs> sure. 
<laughs> okay. <sighs> so when, when, oh, alcohol, that's another one that can uh, cause a number of problems in the digestive tract. So mm -hmm. it can irritate the lining of the stomach, which can lead to gastritis. It can also trigger heartburn because it allows acid and food from the stomach to kind of come back up into the esophagus. Really? Yeah. Did not know. And it can affect how quickly food moves through the gut. So there, there is some evidence that drinks with high alcohol concentrations can have the opposite effect of running stuff through quickly <laughs> and they actually slow things down. So just be yeah. careful. All right. Tell me when, when I should talk to the doctor about pos problems. Possible situations. Um, <sighs> well, please be sure to contact your healthcare team. If you have constipation plus abdominal pain, mm -hmm. weight loss, Nausea and vomiting and fever. And always if there's any blood or dark stools. Ooh, that's a big one. Yep. You know what's so funny? And <laughs> the other day, against my will, I will say, my husband stopped at the little um, countryside grocery garden thing and bought beets. <laughs> And so I was teasing him. Well, I was wondering, hold on a second. I was wondering at what point it became against your will and then beats. Yes. That's where. Okay. So he said, guess what we're having for dinner? And I said, only if you're cooking them. But then I had to get out Mr. Google and figure out how to cook a beat. So I cooked him stupid beets, but then I was teasing him the next day. Don't forget that you ate beets last night because if he saw any horrendous coloring out of it, Either orifice, <laughs> we were going to have a stitchiation. <laughs> I love beets and I don't know why. Well, okay. I lie. I love beets at Spencer Steakhouse <laughs> on the salad. Uh -huh. We went to dinner with Kevin's brothers there and I'm the only one that liked the beets. So they're Everybody all like loading can. them up on my plate. I'm like, oh, this is the best day ever. Yeah. Yeah. That's Just funny. theirs. Oh yeah. No. Um, and also when I had to cook those horrendous things, I should have been wearing a shirt, the color oh. you have on today. Yeah. And did it stain your hands? Yes. How do yes. you cook a beet? Um, well you can boil or bake them or whatever. I mean, truly whatever that they said the easiest way is just to boil it like a spud after oh. you've cut it up and then yeah. it's semi soft. And I, I don't know. I do don't you, eat them. So do, do Mike you season them. them at all? Do you? He, he <clears throat> seasoned them afterwards. Yeah. I, I didn't go. I didn't what? go too wild. You're like, I don't want to know. I just eat them. So they I didn't want to touch them. Edible. Then I had to scrub them <laughs> and then. <sighs> God, you are a good wife. The things I have to do. I know. Yeah. So anyway, the other thing I wanted to say is um, besides the enema stories. Oh, God. Um, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> um, there's different kinds of enemas. Oh boy. There's a cleansing enema, mm. but there's a cooling enema, Ooh. which if you have a really high temperature, that's one what? way to work it through. Oh. I'll just put my wrists under cold water. <laughs> <laughs> also, <laughs> enemas can help put medicine up you. Who knew? Um, uh, return flow helps with flatulence. And for those of you that don't know, that's a big old fart, fart. on sideways. <laughs> big old fart. Um, and then there's one that's, um, a, you can also do an oil retention enema um, that softens the stool. So that's when you're really stoved up is when you get desperate for that. Or okay, use, so what would you rather, <clears throat> wait, an wait. enema or broccoli? Oh, sorry. Go oh, ahead. gross. Ew. <laughs> I can't believe you have to think about this. Eat the broccoli. <laughs> I'm not eating the freaking broccoli. You weren't done. Sorry. Oh, I was also going to talk about su suppositories. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, would you rather broccoli, enema, or suppository? So a suppository is a, a small package of medic medicine. In, Medi medicine? In, <laughs> medication? That's um, in glycerin. So just pop that bad boy up there and... You take care of everything that ails you. And I'm not answering your question. <laughs> <laughs> the so that's all you I gotta know eat about the broccoli, dude. <laughs> <sighs> so funny story about sheep. Um, so sometimes they will have like a rectal prolapse mm -hmm. and a lot of it's caused by environmental issues or if the sheep cough a lot. And so kind of they blow out their butt. I mean, that's that's the way you say it. Yeah. So anyway, when that <laughs> happens, there are things that you have to do to help try to treat it. And um, some of it is 
potentially doing enemas with them if they get kind of backed up. Yep. Well, there's also this thing called ringworm with sheep. (laughs) <laughs> where uh you you know they get it's like a fungus that they get and you can treat it with athlete's foot spray um mm-hmm. and then back to the prolapse you <laughs> can also use like preparation h to help stop this kind of the swelling on some of it so just imagine that i'm at the store and we have a plethora of things going on plethora. and my basket contains <laughs> enemas preparation h and athlete's foot spray can you imagine that it absolutely kept the boys away <laughs> No one wanted to come near me because they were like, I don't know what's going on with her, but it can't be good. She's got all of the cooties. You go through the line. Well, actually, I think this is actually one of the times that I've been very grateful for (laughs) self-checkout because can you imagine going through the line with that? And then you're explaining to the cashier, like, I swear it's for the sheep. And they're like, yeah, right, lady. (laughs) That's like when I'm buying 15 dozen donuts or really bad crappy food. And I'm like, it's not all for me. (laughs) I swear. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's funny. I, I do remember having to run to the store to buy a fleet's enema mm-hmm. for a sheep. Yep. And I did make sure that they knew it wasn't for me. I know. You have to. <laughs> but they're like, okay, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. How many times have they heard that it's for the sheep? <laughs> Twice. And then they're probably like, what are you doing to that sheep? No. T- oh, no. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so let's uh, let's end this day. <laughs> let's end this shitty topic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so we usually wrap up with Grandpa Grandma Saints. Yes. And so I've been kind of going through, and, and every time I hear one, I have to research it. Well, just the other day on social media, I found this new um, site where actually old phrases we still today, use today and where they originate from. Oh, I love and that And so, so we're going to um, add these, mm-hmm. and then Alyssa will put it in the show notes and all that. So anyway, here it goes. During the age of exploration, sailors faced numerous dangers at sea, including severe storms. Those who survived these perilous conditions were said to have weathered the storm. The engineering practice of building bridges to connect two points inspired the metaphorical use of the phrase to bridge the gap. When you connect two disparate things, you must bridge the gap. In medieval times, traveling musicians known as minstrels would perform songs and tell stories at inns and taverns in exchange for food and lodging. To earn their meal, they had to sing for their supper. (laughs) Over time, this phrase evolved into a metaphor meaning to work hard or demonstrate one's skills to earn a reward. The phrase was further popularized by the nursery rhyme, Little Tommy Tucker, first printed in the mid 1700s. Those are great. Yeah, that's awesome, huh? I love that, yeah. Yeah. I like the guy's voice. (laughs) Yeah. It's very deep and mysterious. Yes. Those are good. I'm looking forward to more of them. There's a lot. (laughs) Well, uh, listeners, thank you for being here, for sticking with this through the end. If you indeed did so, I'm also sorry. Go drink some water. (laughs) Um, (laughs) If you have ideas, like if you have verses that you want to share, if you have topic ideas or grandma sayings, please email those. You can do so at julie at epagahomecare.com or inga at epagahomecare.com. That's you. Yep. Go like and follow our stuff. Um, Subscribe on like YouTube or Spotify, anywhere you listen to podcasts. Do all of those things. All of it. Yep. Because that's it, huh? Well, if they don't, they get stuck with stuff like this. Because <laughs> these are my yeah, send in your own topics. Otherwise, these are you my get own whatever brain child. <laughs> whatever Julie comes up with. <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> Peace out, Girl Scouts. Have a good day. The caregiven name is a registered trademark of the Veritrus Health Incorporated Company. EPAGA is not connected to, affiliated with, or endorsed by Veritrus or any of its affiliates. Mm-hmm.